So we are coming to crystallize the Whitney Houston principle. That is, um, you know, how to avoid prescription drugs, addiction and deaths and so forth. So many people are dying from it that it's becoming an epidemic and it's becoming a problem. And I, I, how can we handle such a problem? Well, I mean, first of all, you get prescription drugs because, you, you know, you, you exhibit certain symptoms or you lie and tell you that this is what you want or this is how you feel and so forth. So, um, they said also, I think it was one in every three or one in every five persons was suffering from depression. And um, I know that there is a chemical imbalance and there might be a physiological uh, problem that causing people to be depressed. But I think the majority of people are being depressed because it's by design. This drug menace and all this mental problems that are going on, it's by design. We're coming to a crucial time in, in church history in which people are going to have momentous decisions to make and some significant problems. And if you can't handle it, uh, it's going to hurt you. Um, you're going to commit suicide, you get nervous breakdowns, you're going to start crazy, shoot yourself and others. You know, I mean, a variety of responses people can make to these. And so, um, like a, a crack, I understand the first whack, you're, you're, you're hooked. Now, if somebody were to spike my drink with stuff like that, in spite of me, I mean, I, I'm very careful about my drink. I mean, when I used to party a little bit in Canada, you know, lonely up there trying to get me some love and all that, going to the wrong place to party. And, um, I, 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 well, you know, I had this overriding thing with these guys, these police and all that. This woman treated me so nice. Hey, come and join us at my table. <laughs> what do you want to drink? I, I'm good. I'm all right. See, yeah, you want something? Let me go and get it. You know, no, 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 no. I went and ordered my soda myself. And then she said, oh, let's go and dance. No, no, no. Wait till I drink my soda out first, baby. No, no, I'm not going to go and come back and take this soda here, baby. I'm going to drink out my soda. Or if I come back and I drink it, I'm going to throw it away. <laughs> you know, so if, in a cell, we say somebody gets through my defense and I'm stuck on some crack thing. And I wake up and I feel it, this crack I had and, and I go, I'll go and get some help straight away. I'm not going to use it. I got to die. I prefer to die. Yeah, you're going to die anyway, right? So I prefer to die from the withdrawal symptoms from the first try. You know, I'm not going to do it on my own, but if somebody spike it, I'm going to die because I'm not going to continue it, you know. All right, so, um, but, uh, you know, what's causing all these problems? Well, people using drugs, cheer in their own way, they have no discipline, and, and, and folks don't understand, these new ways of doing things, like, it's a problem with Spock and all these people. Now, I mean, spanking. I mean, if you talk wrong with spanking, people think that you're an idiot or, or you're a child abuse or whatever. But God said it. God said, don't spare the rod and spoil the child. And if God says spank the kids, man, uh, it got to be something good in it, bro. I got a lot of that. And uh, I mean, I didn't like it. Uh, so on. And I never had a chance to spank my kids because they didn't grow up with me. Okay. But the deal is this, that when you do some, some wrong things, you are so filled with guilt. And when your parents come and put that spank on you, you cry and you go through all that. But you know what? It's like redemption. It's like forgiveness. It's like everything is good after that. But if your parents come and say, I'm going to take away your toy. It's like, so what? You just go and lock up your room and don't worry about it. But that guilt hasn't been dealt with. In my case, my guilt has been ameliorated. But the guy who you know, sent him his room and gave him some nice little lecture, he still got that guilt. All right? Now, I ain't got time to waste with these pseudo-intellectuals and computer all kind of stupid arguments with all spanking this and all that. I ain't got time to waste with that, man. We're trying that and look at the problems we have. And maybe we need to try something else. Try what I'm saying here. You know? I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm not talking about putting the kids on the bus and putting them out in the cold, naked and all that. I'm not talking about that. But you know your child and you know you got his attention or her attention, right? That's enough. When you got the attention, it's good. So, you know, you're teaching the school, I teach in the school, I have no authority. I say, where's my homework? <laughs> the dog eat it. I drop mine on this way here. What you could be, my country, when I was going to school, they would give you six lashes on your arse. And then I came to the place where I say, you know what? I don't need no licks again. I'm going to do the right thing. <laughs> and that'll solve that problem. So, the mental problems that people have in are from some of these handovers, stuff from kids and wrong training and all that kind of stuff. Latchkey kids, nobody there to help the kids along and all that, the drugs they're using and so on. And then most of all, I've discovered there's a certain syndrome 
I've seen some people that have responsible jobs. I'm assuming they went to university and the college and, and so on. But when you look at them, you could see, like, I have an extra sense, like, and I could see, like, like there's a crowd and they're into a mix-up, confusing thing going on in the lives they're writing. And just like the woman I saw in Canada, when I saw her eyes rolling, I suspect that she was involved in, in voodoo. So I went over and talked to her, and she definitely was. And she's trying to excuse it. Oh, I'm so lonely. I ain't got no friends here. So she got involved in voodoo. Some of these people here, they're reading uh, Harry Potter. They're reading Stephen King books. And there's something with the mind. The Bible says, by beholding, you become changed. And if you like books that deal with horror and, and serious mutilation and those kind of bizarre kind of stuff, you keep reading that, you're going to end up having some mental problems. I, I can't explain how it works, man, but you're going to end up like that. And so these people I see, they're going around like in circles. And they all look immature. I try to talk to them and they behave like kids and they behave angry. Because, I mean, I'm a good guy. And, 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 and the devil knows that if I talk with them and associate with them, perhaps I'm going to lead them and show them a better way. And they're going to be able to avoid that stuff. So he gives an upfront kind of, you know, harsh behavior. And I don't have time to waste with going beyond that, man. If you get involved in stuff, I'm going to try to come to help you, saying, I leave me alone, I don't want to help. I'm not going to fight you, though. I'm not going to fight you to say, I need to help you. Let me bust your head. You don't get me locked up on all kind of stuff. I ain't got time to waste with that. I mean, maybe Jesus is going to help you with that, okay? As a matter of fact, if a person is behaving that rude, but God had told me to go and talk to that person, then uh, I have to back up and come with a different strategy to get through to that person. But if it's me who's saying, oh, I so love people, I'm so sympathetic, oh, I like to help people with money and everything, and I, I'm going to go and talk to this person and be nice, then I'm going to have some problems right there because God never really, God knows that a person's beyond help. They're useless. So all I'm going to do is wasting my time. Now, on the other hand, these drugs are manufactured, and these manufacturers have a profit to make. And these doctors, when you go to them and they don't give you no medication, you're looking for a new doctor because you figure that he should give you something to, you know what I mean? Even if it's placebo, whatever, you, uh, that's a drug that you're going to make, you, you can think it's the real deal, but it's just, uh, you know, um, flour and water and sugar, right? Um, so you have all these factors. And so I've seen people now, they're now in using pills. The other day, uh, over the road there, this woman, she just fell down off the seat and on the ground and stretching like she and dies. I say, call the ambulance. I talked I talk to a supervisor lady. I say, call the ambulance, call it now. And she feel like I shouldn't be talking to her like that because I'm just, you know, I'm just a nobody over there. And she's supposed to be an officer. And she's supposed to be, you know, it doesn't matter the education. It's status in life. She has a job. I don't have one. And she is controlling things. I, I'm just, you know, a recipient of some of the services. So in, in real terms, she got more status than me and so on. And she don't like the way I'm talking to her. But this woman was on the ground. And everybody and in Puerto Rico, when you call them, they don't even come. The ambulance only come like half an hour. And so much stretch out and shy, rolling and everything like that. Eventually, the, you know, things happen. And she get up and sit up and everything went good. When people arrived, she was sitting down. Everything was okay. It was like 15 minutes after. And so the guy, a guy who knew her said, man, she's popping pills, man. She was then pill popping stuff. I, I was in L.A. and I see a guy just walking around. He see a bottle and he opens his pills. He just takes some and pops some. And it's like, shucks. That pill could be something for some mental, serious mental problems. Could it be for a heart problem. It could be something that unless you have a condition, you use it, it will give you that condition. And some of these things will give you a heart attack for real, man. So, you know, we, 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 we had a, a juncture here where people doing all kind of dumb stuff, man. And you talk to them because they weren't trained right and, and they're not accustomed to people telling them that this thing is wrong and you need to stop it now. It's like, you should make me embarrass me. The parents used to all in there, oh, you're a good boy. Oh, nice, nice. No, whatever, you know. So, um, with me, Houston principle, I don't know if we could ever, uh, you know, conclude or crystallize a principle in, with her name because, I mean, she was a young girl, innocent, born and hooked up with a bad boy. Uh, as a matter of fact, I met this woman the other day who tells me she liked bad boys. You know, the big rap sheet, criminal record, tattoo, and piercing, you know, maybe an earring and all that stuff. So women like some stupid stuff. But a guy that's straight up like me, oh, I just shave sometimes. But uh, generally, I'm good. I'm upright and everything. So I, I, I'm not going to lead nobody astray. If she wants to go and work the street, I'll say, well, baby, I can see it, okay, because I'm not interested in that stuff, you know what I mean? But they ain't gonna like me because I'm too plain. I met a lot of women who say, uh, we just do for fun. I, I like to read, I like to go to the computer, I like to go on the internet, I like to learn stuff, I like to watch the news and 
documentaries. Oh no, I'll be back in a minute. She ain't coming back. She she wants to hear me say, oh, I like to smoke. Uh, get me a couple of beers and some pint of uh, rum over there and um, bring in the boys and the girls and we have a big orgy over here. You know, she, oh, I'd be back. She, she wasn't leaving over here. She said, let's go and get us stuff. Let's get the team together. Let's, you know, I mean, folks looking for problems, right? And um, that's a part of uh, when the enemy got us to become so secular that um, the secularity, you know, is catching us. We throw God out and um, religion out and now it's getting us, man. It's dangerous times.